Hi, I'm Emily. Welcome to Snack and Spark. Uh, normally I talk about cross stitch. This is usually a floss tube channel. Um, not today. I'm mixing it up today. I want to go over my planners and also kind of show off my stitchy binder. So it will have cross stitch related material, but I'm not going to be showing any of my projects today. That's okay. I want to do a flip through, and that's what I'm going to do. There's a Beautifully cold and clear, I almost forgot what day it is, Tuesday morning. My coffee's really hot. It is a vanilla biscotti. Um, I'm really energetic right now. I am really, really energetic right now. So, bear with me. Hopefully I can stay on track. And uh, it has a buzz, but let's go ahead and put that on silent. Let's get going. So first and foremost, I want to flip through this. This is my Silk and Sonder January 2021 planner. Um, the theme for this month is ambition. So this has been popping up in my news feed and I was really curious about it. So I thought I would try it. It is a subscription. Um, so you can choose for them to send you. It arrives each month. I am not sponsored. They have no idea who I am. I just purchased a subscription. I wanted to test it out for a little bit and because I have noticed that I love planning, I love the idea of planning and bullet journaling, um, but when it comes to the execution, I flounder. I love the beautiful creative spreads and the lettering and the hand lettering, but whenever I try, I get discouraged and I lose faith and I think a large part of that is I don't know what I'm doing um, or I know what I want, but not how to execute it. Um, so then I did some, this kept popping up, I kept seeing this, I saw a couple walkthroughs, walkthroughs, flip throughs, um, I went to the website, I did some research on them, and fell in love with it. I think they're gorgeous, I think they're beautiful. I personally love that it is one month at a time. Um, I definitely get overwhelmed very easily, and so I just having just this month in front of me was great. Um, and I also really like that it's themed, um, that the focus for each month changes and it gives me something to focus on, which I definitely need in my life. So let's do a quick flip through. Again, this is the January 21, 2021 Ambition Planner. Not sponsored. I just really like it. It's beautiful. Look at this. I like that it's not pink. It, this is actually a very neutral, like tan and gray. Even these flowers, um, they are more gray than what's showing up here. They look more blue, but in real life, they're definitely more of like a really dark navy, but gray flower. And there is some little hints of gold. I really like that. Uh, first and foremost, there's an index and it just starts off beautiful. Um, I like that everything is right there. It's done for me, but then there is this customizable area because spread out throughout the, the planner are blank notes pages. And so I went ahead and numbered those um, or went and wrote what page, the page numbers at the bottom. You know what I mean. I went and saw the page number and then filled it in. Um, and then as I use them, I'm going to fill out here. And some of them I've already uh, designated for certain things. Then it gives us a beautiful, like, welcome January letter. I'm going to confess I have not read it. I will later. <laughs> um, then it starts off very first is a yearly reflection and end of year wrap up. Um, think back to your entire year and who were you, what were you, what were you doing? And it gives you these beautiful boxes to fill in and it's got things you achieved, people you met, places you went, and books you read. Um, I marked some, I have covered some of the things in this because I have started to fill it out and it is private. Um, like the people I met, I have their last names and I would like to respect my neighbors and my friends' privacy and not just give away their information. Um, also, I covered some of the places I went because I included my hometown and places where family lives and I don't, I don't want to share that either. Sorry guys. Um, I don't mind sharing though, like the things I achieved because I am proud. Um, we, I surpassed my reading goal. I set a goal of 50 books. I have read over 60, which is great. I didn't get COVID. I had to get COVID tested. It was not COVID. It was pneumonia, but it wasn't COVID. Um, we 
my father passed away and I said I survived my dad's death because that was this that has been the hardest thing I've ever had to do and go through and experience in my life and I'm glad I I have survived it so far we adopted our second dog Kennedy we have our beautiful pup Kennedy she is going to be six months on January 2nd I'm really excited to have her with me she's currently asleep in her bed and I started my mental health journey I really took a focus on my mental health this year, um, especially before um, the loss of my dad. I was really trying to focus on getting myself in a better place. Um, I've been diagnosed with anxiety and uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, and so I've been really trying to focus on getting myself um, in a better place mentally and managing those feelings and my symptoms. Um, my dad's death has obviously set me back a lot but I'm still trying to focus and get myself where I want to be mentally. Um, so please take care of yourself. Therapy is not shameful. If you need it, go. <laughs> um, and then the books I read. I love that this is in here. I read a lot of books though. So I just did my top five and that is um, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens, Follow Me to Ground by Sue Rains, Three, ooh, three Dark Crowns by Kendar or Kendare Blake. Jeez. The Gilded Wolves. I don't remember who wrote that. I'm sorry. And The Lost Girls of Paris. I want to say Peg something. Um, I'm sorry. I don't remember the authors of the bottom ones, but I love, I loved all of these. So um, find them. Read them. They're beautiful. Then we've got The Whole Year at a Glance which is really nice. Then they've got the month at a glance. It's small, it's just big enough to jot down some really quick things, which I've done. I've just kind of put, filled in some stuff. Um, then the next two pages, the next spread is the future log. Sorry, I need to be able to hold this. Um, and it gives you the next four months, February, March, April, and May. Um, and the boxes aren't big enough to really write in, but there are lines so you can write down um, and I like being able to write um, on the dates of like, on these lines, my birthday, friends' birthdays, holidays, things that I want to remember, um, appointments we've already set up. That way I can take a look at it right here um, instead of having to like pull up my phone and flip through the calendar. It's literally right here. It can just lay flat in front of me. And I like that a lot. Um, then we've got a... December reflection and a January intentions and they kind of go together and I really like that. Um, so the December reflection, they really want you to review your last month before you set up your intentions for the next month. Um, I don't know if this is something that continues month to month. This is the very first month I received. Um, starting off fresh with a fresh planner, fresh year. Um, so I can't say if this is how it is month to month. We'll find out. Um, but I like that they've given categories. December wins, December hiccups, December favorite moments, December hard moments, um, and what do I want to start, stop, and continue. And again, I've covered some of these because some of this is private and I don't I don't want to share, and that's okay. But I like I like that. Then we have January intentions, and so it this is your goal setting page. Um, this are these are not resolutions, these are not to-do lists. It actually says setting intentions is not making a to-do list. It's asking something of yourself and then giving yourself the strength to do it. And I like that. I really like that. Um, there are six boxes here, six different categories. We've got spiritual health, physical health, money management, personal life, um, key relationships, and professional goals. So yeah, like... Perfect. Uh, these next two pages, I think, are my absolute favorite just aesthetically. Um, they're very pleasing to me personally. I love circles. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but I really I really love the way circles look. I love the ed the, there's like no hard edges. They're, I just I love the shape. Um, and so these next two pages are both trackers in circle shape, and I am a huge fan. So we first have this habit tra or mood tracker. Isn't that just, and I love this. I love it, I do, I really, really do. There is room for six feelings. Um, I've tried to do kind of specific broad categories. Um, I've got like positive or neutral ones over here. 
um, happy, productive, um, normal, and I've got sad, angry, and sick over here. Um, and for me personally, I like that it's open. You could color it, you could use stickers, I mean, you could do whatever. I personally, I'm going to use stickers. I found a an Etsy shop called The Worry Cloud, and they make different planner stickers, and one of the things they make is just these different colored icons for things. Um, they're adorable, and so I ordered some of those. They have like little rubber duckies, and they have umbrellas, they are music notes, ribbons. They're just little shapes that are just different colors. And I like that. I like that it's not necessarily like a particular thing. Um, and so I ordered those, and I'm going to be using those because it comes in way more than six colors, and I'm really excited. So I'm just going to stick, I'm going to use the duckies first because I really want to. I'm just going to have little rubber duckies as my moods, and I'm excited. Then we have the habit jerk. Um, there is room to do seven habits, and I like that it goes all the way around. Um, I will be using colored pencils for this. Um, I plan on picking seven colors I like and just coloring them in as they go around. That's what I'm excited for. Um, and I really like that they give you a total of seven, and we'll talk to this later, but then during each of the weekly spreads, um, they give you a section for five habits. So even though you have seven, I like that there is, you could then pick um, the five you really, really want to focus on. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, for me, for example, two of mine, gratitude logged and getting enough water, I basically am tracking that already, and I'll show you what I mean when I get there. I'll just do it now. So, so here's the habit tracker for like the weekly dashboard, okay? You can do five. So I will list five of mine, the goal, fill them out, total at the end of the week, but then during the actual like day to day, so two of mine I have, I want to log a gratitude every day and I want to keep track, make sure I'm getting enough water every day. Well, I filled this out before I've really looked at it. We have a one thing up here, which I will be using to log my gratitude. And at the bottom of each day is a water tracker. So really, at the beginning of mine, I just have to write the five other things that, um, those five other habits that I'm tracking, that obviously I don't have, um, like prompts for or boxes for in the weekly. I don't know. You know what I mean? So I'm excited about that. I like that I will actually be able to track all seven of my habits weekly without having to flick flip back and forth. Um, but I do plan on tracking it just a week at a time and then going back at the end of the week and coloring in the wheel. But I do have this marked with this adorable like flower paper clip. Um, then we've got a sleep tracker and a dream log. I'm not sure how much I will use this. I've never used a sleep tracker or a dream log before, so we'll see. Um, I like how it's set out. I like that it's just straightforward. They're lines and it's prompted, you know, um, what time I fell asleep, what time I woke up, the number of hours, how I feel, and then how rested I feel on a scale of one to five. It's very simple, straightforward. Um, and then the dream log is just a line for every day. If you remember your dream, jot it down. But again, um, it's okay to daydream. Sorry, I'm not trying to go super fast, but I tried to film this already earlier this morning. Um, and let's describe it as coffee and chaos. I just, I was all over the place. Um, I also, on top of anxiety and PTSD, I also uh, struggle with um, attention deficit disorder and hyperactivity. If that wasn't obvious by some of the other videos I've made. Um, but I do not take medicine to manage my attention um, because I don't want to and 
I'm trying to actually manage it myself. And I definitely, by going through therapy and dealing with other things, it has helped me manage that. But anyways, like I said, I filmed it once before and I, it was a mess. I was all over the place. I was very, very hyper and fidgety and I spoke really fast, but then I was also rambling and just getting way off topic. It was really bad and my dogs were being really distracting. So I just stopped it and deleted it and decided to start over now that I feel calmer and I already know how I want this video to go. So let's continue. <laughs> The next page we've got um, what they're calling the Wheel of Life. I've never seen one of these before. I've never done one of these before. But I like the idea of it. I like um, seeing these categories mapped out in front of me. Um, but they've given 10 categories, um, different areas of life, and they've asked um, for us to rank them 1 through 10 based on how fulfilled we feel specifically in that category. And then to write down something that you could do to increase your level of fulfillment um, per thing. So the categories they give are um, education, financial, health, career, family, spiritual, relationships, romance, home environment, and adventure. Um, and I did use colored pencils on this and I colored it in. And so like obviously some of my ears are low, but I mean that's okay because then I can see even though I like ranked them, it wasn't until I colored it in, colored it in that I could see, oh wow, like I've obviously put a lot of priority on my education and on my career. I feel very, very fulfilled in those areas. That's great. That means I can back off from those a little bit and focus on the things that, I, that definitely need more attention. Um, specifically, like my health and I guess my sense of adventure. I ranked those the lowest and yeah, like, I've been dealing with a lot of health issues the last few months and I want to make, I need, I need to back off from other things and make my health a priority. And that's important. And also like I, I ranked adventure really low, um, but it admittedly, it puts it into perspective. COVID, we haven't gone anywhere. We haven't done anything in months. We haven't seen our friends or our family. And so, yeah, I'm not surprised that I ranked my adventure low. I'm hoping I can take steps to increase that by managing my anxiety or reaching out to friends. Um, I know a lot of places are doing like online virtual tours. You can go tour like museums in France or the caves. Um, and why shouldn't I go do that? If I feel like I'm lacking something, there are so many ways that I can then achieve that. And that's, that's what I plan on doing. Um, if I feel like I'm missing out and I want to go see something, so many places and so many people and events are doing things on Facebook that you can join and they do Facebook live events or that way I know personally I've mentioned before I work for the library my specific branch that I work at my my library community um, we have been doing online Facebook live story times and it has been wonderful when we were open during normal hours we had specific story times uh, different days of the week and at different times. We have a baby story time, we have a toddler story time, a preschool, then we have like grade school kids, and we have like a bedtime story time. And obviously we couldn't do those anymore. We're closed to the public, so we couldn't do those. So instead we've transformed it and then have made them online. And our librarians and our children's librarians have been amazing. And they've created these programs where they can interact with the kids still and still read them stories. And it's stuff like that. I know we're not the only ones doing stuff like this. So I know I could jump in and experience something and still feel like I'm getting adventure seeing things. That's my plan. I got a little rambly there. Uh, then on the next page, this is a very big, broad open box and it's, it, they've labeled it your dream life. Um, and there's three boxes. We have a B box, a do box, and a have box. Um, and this is where they really want you to get big and specific. Still not a resolution or necessarily an intention. This is more manifesty or like a vision board or a dream board or whatever um, of things you want. Things you want to have, things you want to be, things you want to do, um, but to not 
box yourself in with timelines or dates or expectations. It's to just scribble and be free and let your brain, heart, whatever, um, fill it out. I've covered a few of these because they are private, um, but I mean, it's really nice. I really, really like that. So I want to explain um, if you noticed. If you didn't, you're getting an extra story. Um, I have, I would like to be a bride in white and I would like to do, I would like to get married in Canada. But wait, you keep mentioning your husband. Ding, 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 ding. You are right. I do have a husband. I am married. Uh, here's the thing. We were married earlier this year on our anniversary, but because of COVID, we had a very, very, very small, um, event. I don't even really want to call it a ceremony. Uh, we went to the courthouse and we were married and it was just us and the officiant and our witnesses. And that's okay. I'm not displeased in the slightest. I'm married. I'm married to my best friend and that's what matters. Um, however, we had planned on having a wedding. We, we had originally wanted to get married in October 2020 of this year. It didn't happen. And that's okay. Things happen. A lot of stuff has happened. And looking back on it, I'm actually really relieved. Um, I lost my dad in August. There's no way I would have been able to walk down an aisle in October without him. Um, when it eventually happens, I will be more prepared. And that's okay. Um, but I still want to have a wedding. We both still want to have a wedding. And I don't know when that's going to be. We pretty much put a, a pause on all wedding planning. I'm really glad we hadn't... Um, we hadn't, we didn't book, we hadn't had anything booked. We were still very much in the um, planning, like throwing ideas out stage of things we wanted and had not made any in set in stone plans or called anyone or made any down payments, which is fantastic. Um, and we just had a feeling things were gonna get more serious. So we, we actually got married, it's gonna be a year in March. So, I mean, yeah, like it's, it's a lot, but I, I still want to get, I wanna get married, I do. And there's no reason why I can't dream big. That's what it says to do. Why not be married in Canada? It's beautiful up there. We like to be outside. Sure. Anyways, enough about me. Uh, then we have two um, like spreads that go like hand in hand, but they are different from each other. So the first we have is the ambition prompts. We've got these boxes. How do you define ambition? What does it bring up for you? Do you consider yourself ambitious? Why or why not? And how might you redefine ambition? Um, then we have the influence prompts. My paper clip is kind of in the way. Who are the five people you spend the most time with and why? How do they shape your thoughts? Who are the top five people that you admire? What specifically do you admire about them? Who is your favorite person in the world and why? So some of these I haven't filled out yet. My goal was to only fill out a few pages at a time because again, I didn't want to overwhelm myself. So I've been slowly filling out um, these additional prompts and pages um, over the last couple days to give myself time to actually sit and think about them and what I want it to be. The next two pages are just two of those blank note pages that I've already started to fill out. I've labeled these two um, brain dump um, and they're just gridded paper I, there are 32 boxes across, and so I've done 10 boxes, left a space, 10 boxes, left a space. Um, I'm keeping it kind of back because I have plans on here that I'm not ready to share. <laughs> but it's also just things, like on this side is things that I had in my brain that I wanted to remember, but needed to just get out of my brain to make room for more thoughts. <laughs> Um, so I've done that and then on this side, I have definitely kind of used it as um, a planning side, which I really like. Um, I've got like outlines for videos I want to make on my channel and I never thought I would say that sentence or that I would actually be doing this, but here we are. So I've actually got just a really short um, outline for this video and then I've got one for my next floss tube. So yeah, then we've got a coloring page. I'm really excited. I like this a lot. I will be coloring this. 
just throughout the month. I can definitely see myself kind of just like sitting down and spending some time on it a little bit every day. Then across from that is the ambition acrostic. And there is a quote. Ambition is more than desire. It is desire plus incentive. Determination. Will to achieve the desire. Herbert, Armst Herbert Armstrong. Um, so if you don't know what an acrostic is, it is when they give you the word. And this is the word ambition. And then you are supposed to create... Um, either a phrase or just write more words using those letters to create like a mind map for yourself or something um, you can create like a little phrase you could you know a monkey bites inside the I lost it I was making something up off the top of my head but you could do that or you could just write um, words you associate with it within that word so um, you could do um, oh is opportunity um, eyes intelligence I don't know whatever you want it to be I have mine I will be writing it in it is the first thing that came to mind I'm not gonna share it because it's kind of silly but I don't mind I don't care because it's mine. Then we have the next page is a spread that goes together. Um, I don't want to try and say the word. It is a Japanese word and I don't want to mispronounce it and offend anyone or say a bad word on accident, but it is a Japanese concept that means um, a reason for being. And I'm very excited about this. I'm very excited to, to lay this, to do this. So this is what the whole spread looks like. So here we've got this giant Venn diagram and this is that concept. This is your reason for being right here and it's where all of this then overlaps and it breaks it down so your reason for being is made up of like these four elements which would be um, your mission your profession your vocation and your passion and then it tells you what each of those things mean so you've got your passion what do you love that's your passion then what the world needs is your mission um, what you can get paid for is your vocation and what you're good at is, oh, sorry, <clears throat> what you can get paid for is your profession and what you're good at is your vocation. I'm excited for that. Um, then we have just a beautiful quote page that I will probably at the end of this month cut out and keep um, and stick it somewhere. I don't know where yet, but I'll stick it somewhere. Um, and it says, I am ambitious. I set goals not because I am ungrateful for what I have, but because I am happy with who I am. I enjoy the experience of rising above my perceived limitations and discovering new levels of my capabilities. Dr. Steve Maraboli. Maraboli? It's beautiful. Like, I just, the watercolor and just, I love the neutrals and the quote is, is motivating, so I will more than likely like cut this out, trim it down and stick it somewhere stick it i don't know i have like sometimes i have like this little like junk journal thing that i just like to throw stuff into maybe it goes in there i don't know uh here's another page i'm not sure if i'm gonna use i don't it's a monthly expense tracker it's not that it's terrible or anything like that um or i don't it's not like i, I don't mind to write that down it's just i've never done it before and i don't necessarily feel the need to but Maybe. I might try it. So then um, we get into the weeklies. There is a like week at a glance dashboard and then there is the actual like weekly spread. I'm just kind of throwing words out. We'll see. I'm going to show you a blank one and then I'll show you the one I've already filled out. So this is what a typical blank one looks like. So it'll say what week we're in. So this is week for week two. I like that it highlights, that is not me, that is on the page, but I like that it does that. It highlights it. Um, we have a weekly to-do box. We have a this week I want to feel box, which I really like that. It's definitely like the focus box. We have a, um, what is this, the weekly, ma my major three goals for the week. So even though you've got your to-dos, you can definitely list, like, you could either do your whole to-do list and then pick three or do a to-to list, but then like you know, these are your priorities, however you want to do it. This is that habit tracker I mentioned where it's got room for five. 
I will be using little stickers again because I love stickers and I've got colorful ones that are just that perfect size. Um, and then on this page, we've got the meal plan for the week. I don't really like plan that far in advance. I do when I grocery shop. I will grocery shop based off meals, um, but I don't assign them. Like I don't go Monday is this, and then Tuesday is this, um, because it changes. I pick a, a selection of about six to seven meals that I want to make, shop for them, have all the ingredients, and then as the week goes, I pick and choose which one I feel like making. So I will write it down as I do it, but I won't, I wouldn't, I won't stick to it if I actually try and write it down. I just won't. I know myself. Um, each week has a fun motivational quote at the top that relates back to the theme. Intelligence without ambition is a bird without wings. Salvador Dali. Uh, this is your mental, physical, take care of myself box. Um, mind, body, health plan. Sure. Um, I like this a lot. Um, it's that way it's really quick and easy. You can write down, um, like if you, if you go and work out a lot, you can say like gym time to time or rest day, or if you do yoga or whatever it is. And that's what I've been doing. Um, I'm doing, and you'll see it on when I show you, I'm doing like a 30 day challenge. It starts off really simple. Just want to reintroduce myself to this fitness routine. My abs hurt because I started it yesterday and that's okay. Um, but I just wrote day one, day two, day three, day four is a rest day. So I have rest, but I still want to do like yoga and stretching. So I'm not incredibly stiff and sore. And then I'm also doing a mental health challenge that I plan on. I plan on supplementing the mental health challenge on the rest days of the physical health challenge. Yes. But I like that because then I can just like look at it and remind myself, okay, this is what day I'm on. And then we've got a shopping list. Um, obviously my groceries are more than what would fit in this box, but I like to use this for things that I want to buy for myself or like maybe gifts I'm looking at for my husband or my son or my friends. And then this, this is a cute little thing, a great blank. And it's a great food, a great memory, and a great song from the week. And I'm, I think that's really cute. That's really adorable. So I have the one for this week filled out for the most part. Um, and this is just what I've done. So like I've got this and I like to color these in as I finish off my to do's here, are my habits, I need to go ahead and like fill in from yesterday. These are my three major goals. I've already done one of those. Perfect. This week I want to feel calm and determined. I started my meals. And this is what I mean. I've got my Day one of the full body challenge, day two, blah, blah, blah. Rest, yoga, day one of the mental health, and then the full body challenge again. Things I want to buy related to cross stitch. And then, oh, I should probably text my husband. I want champagne for New Year's. And it's we're supposed to get a really bad snowstorm tonight. So I don't know if I'm going to go to work tomorrow. It depends on how bad the weather is. But uh, I'm going to text him because he's at work, but he gets off early today and be like, can you stop and get champagne for New Year's? Thanks. Love you. Um, and the quote for this week is, ambition is the path to success. Persistence is the vehicle you arrive in. From by Bill Bradley. So each one, like I said, has the, um, like the dashboard and then it goes into, I'm going to skip forward to another blank one just because I've already started writing and I want to show an actual blank one. So this is what then the week looks like and I am a huge fan of this I like that it is simple I like that it's plain that it is not overwhelmed with color um, but it has everything I want on it which is fantastic um, I get overwhelmed with planners like this for my everyday because they are I was using this one for as like my catch-all because it has everything but it's just completely open and I feel weird because I don't fill it up. The things I want to do day to day don't take up this whole page. Um, and so then I felt like bad. Like it was like, I felt like guilty. Like I wasn't fully using my planner, which I shouldn't feel that way. That makes no sense. Planners, planning should not make you feel guilty. That's why I really like this. Plus, I notice I prefer to write, I like to write in list form. 
Um, I do, I like to make lists in my planner. And so having columns like this, that is like the full length is fantastic. Um, I like that it gives the day, the date, the water tracker is down here. Um, the one thing, the little weather tracker, which is really cute, but it's open. You can do whatever you want day to day. I don't need a big Saturday and Sunday. So this is also really, really nice to me. Um, and this is just what I've kind of started. I like stickers. I have a bunch of stickers. I'm going to use them. I like them. And I've just pulled them from everywhere. I've got, like, these are happy planner stickers from all kinds of different boxes. Um, this is a bando sticker. This is a bando sticker. These, the workout sticker and the take note sticker were from like a random like sticker sheet that I got from the mail from someone I ordered. I don't remember, um, but I like them. And I went ahead and gave myself a to-do list yesterday because I had to, I took some time off and I stayed home, um, did my workout, I listed it here did my to-do list and so obviously the things I got done are crossed off and then I'm migrating the stuff I didn't either today or tomorrow. I'm going to be very busy these days because I have, um, I want to work out but then also I'm supposed to go to work tomorrow from all day. I'm supposed to work from 8 to 5 tomorrow but then also I want to have all my filming done and I want to get all of my end of the year plans wrapped up. So yeah, things are busy but I like to decorate and I like, and see like my little water, I colored it in which is really cute, but yeah. And other ones I got, I wanna mention this. So these two are from Peanut Butter Taco. It is an Etsy shop. Um, I really, really like her things. I like them a lot. I've got this because I am doing um, a challenge, a year long challenge and with my reading. I like to spice it up. Um, and I'm basically playing bingo with my books. I've made a bingo card for my reading goals and I came up with the categories myself um, and I'm in a group that does this. It's, she originally created this concept for cross stitch. Like you list your projects um, every month. She's going to draw like bingo number. She'll draw two a month, um, three if she draws the free space, which she did of course in January, which is just interesting. It's funny how that worked. We all need a break. We all need that free space. Um, and then you just match it up to your card and you know, the point is to work on it and then like try and get a bingo or a blackout and then reward yourself as you earn bingos or whatever. Um, but of course, so these, she drew these three and this one, audiobooks only. I decided to set myself that challenge, not thinking it would get drawn first, but it's Audiobooks only. So the only books I'm going to allow myself to consume are audiobooks. But then she also drew this one, which is six books in a month. So I need to read at least six books, which means I need to start finding audiobooks that are available that I want. And I'm just going to start day one, currently listening. So I've got that there and ready for myself. Then at the end of each week, um, they've got these blank note pages. Um, and I plan on using these to write down things that pertain to the week. Um, like this one is, so it depends on how you want to call it. It's either at the beginning of the week before or it's at the end of this week. So like this one, ta-da. I'm using this page to talk about things for this week. Um, so I have more detailed stuff of things that I, I want to do or projects I'm working on. Um, so I will write down in here as well. I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to. I won't do it right now. But I have, I have tasks from one a Facebook group that I'm in that we're supposed to get done by the 31st. Like um, It's a goal we're all trying to achieve, so I wrote down the details of the goal. Um, but I also want to write down, like, so I don't forget to, like, look at this and, like, just double check with myself and write down that here. And then to use this page as the setup for this week. Yeah. 
We're almost done. There is, so halfway through, and I like this as well. So halfway through the month is a currently page. I love these. I am obsessed with these. Um, I have mentioned previously that I am also like a stationary addict. I love notes and stickers and cute postcards and letter writing, accoutrement. And one of the things I do when I write to pen pals um, or when I send letters to family is I do a currently list in all of my letters. Um, I do some different than this, but I do include on like a cute little note card, I will do currently reading, currently watching, currently listening. Um, so then to see this pop up in the middle of my planner made me very, very happy. Um, and they've got currently loving, currently feeling, enjoying, anticipating, wishing, reading, watching, and planning. And I like that. I really like that. It's kind of a nice little focus thing right there, smack dab in the middle of the month, which is nice. Then... I don't think there's anything else that pops up. I just wanted to make sure. No. Okay. So then here's this last week. Um, and according to the plan, um, the subscription, the journal for February should show up this week. Should show up either right before this Monday or sometime this week. That way you have, um, you have your next planner available and ready to go before the month starts. I'll let you know. Um, but then the last three pages are just three blank, three blank note pages. One, two, three. Um, so for those of you who are in School of Magical Stitches and are going to be, this is a cross stitch part. So sorry if you're done with the planning, it probably won't pertain to you. If you are in School of Magical Stitches and you are joining us for the January 2021 new year of Percy Jackson, and I'm really excited. I have dedicated two of these. Um, this one isn't, isn't laying right because I've been folding it around so much. I've dedicated two of these pages to the reading extra credit and the stitching extra credit prompts. Um, because if you're like me, I can save it on Facebook. I can save the post on Facebook and I'll keep it. But if I don't write it down somewhere, I'm constantly going back to my phone to search for it and find it. And I get really annoyed. Um, I get really irritated because then I feel like I have to search through. And I and I have files and things organized on my computer, but it's, I still just get annoyed feeling like I have to search through everything. Sorry, I need a coffee break before it gets cold. Um, I want to have them here and readily available. Because I also forget. I forget and then if I'm out at the bookstore or because I work at the library, if I'm at work, I can go grab a book real quick. Um, I forget what I'm looking for. And because I'm at work, I don't want to have my phone out and I definitely don't want to be on my phone on Facebook. And so I want to be able to have the prompts written down and then go ahead and make like an outline or an idea list Probably in pencil, <laughs> not in pen, unless it's solidified, but like write the prompts in pencil, pen, and then write my ideas in pencil. By the way, I got this cute pencil from, oh no, they're all twisted. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, these came as a set from Pretty, Pretty Paper Club, and I love these. They are grammar pencils. So we have two, two, and two. There, there, and there, and stationary and stationary. Um, I love these. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, so I plan on doing, once that gets released, the extra credit gets posted for the month, um, or any pop-up challenges. That'll go back there. But basically, any of the extra, extra things I'm gonna stick here here and just make my lists so yeah and then i've taped this in this is a little due date card you can see i already previously used it um but i want to i have a bunch of these and i think they're really cute but that way you know i can lift it up i can write under it blah blah blah, blah whatever um i want to write what it is and then write the book i have and then once i've checked it out i want to write the due dates for everything that way 
I can stay on track of it because um, I'm really bad at remembering due dates even though I work at the library. I'm really bad at that. Um, and so I want to have that with me and like put a little notation across this one out because that was from January of this past year. Goodness. Um, I want to like write the due date plus like either the author's initials or like the first initial couple letters of the book title. That way I can associate it with each each one. So that's the plan for that. That's why that's in there. And then I think for this last note page, we'll see what pops up. But I think this is just going to be for a pop-up event or for any random thing that I want to keep track of or questions that get answered. Um, I know a bunch of us have questions about some of these like year-long challenges. Um, so I'm leaving that this page really up to what I need it to be. So if this is, if I need a place to start to keep a more detailed record of the year long events or certain challenges or pop up events, that's what this is going to be. So letting myself be flexible with that. And last but not least is the back cover. And I really like this. Um, they have given us the definition of Sonder. It is a noun. The realization that each random passerby is living a life as vivid and complex as your own, populated with their own ambitions, friends, routines, worries, and inherited craziness. An epic story that, continue, that continues invisibly around you. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. So there was that. Then this is just really quick because I don't have a lot to say. This is my happy planner. This is what I was using for my big like catch-all and it just got to be too much um, but I like that it is welcome to the book club and it is book themed so I've actually decided to just convert this to my <clears throat> reading planner um, and so I will show you so I've got like this is this week's spread um, and this is just what I've been doing I've been writing in pencil because I don't really care I'm just making little notes so I've got uh, this stands for the book I'm currently trying to finish before New Year's, which is uh, The Snow Fell Three Graves Deep. Um, I have a goal of how many pages I want to read, and then I was going to write like what I actually read underneath. I read more than my goal yesterday. Um, and then this is... Uh, this is related. I finished listening to Jane Eyre, and I want to rewatch the movie. It's been years since I watched it, which then prompted me to think about a cross stitch design because I really enjoyed this quote from the book which was um, I am no bird and no net ensnares me I am a free human being with an independent will really like that quote um, and I was trying to see if I could find any cross stitch patterns and I couldn't find anyone that I that I actually liked uh, there were a bunch of not a bunch but there were like character patterns I don't want that I didn't want to like stitch Mr. Rochester and Jane and there weren't, but there weren't any like quote patterns. Um, I could buy like a print of it. I don't want that. So I think I'm gonna actually try and design my own. Wish me luck. We'll see. Um, but then, so then for today, I just kind of wrote down what a preliminary what I wanted to do reading wise today, which was uh, I needed to start finding audiobooks for January, and I need at least six. And so I started this like here. I've got The Wild Robot Escapes, um, which is actually a children's novel. Um, it is book two in the Wild Robot series by Peter Brown. My son and I listened to the first one, which was The Lost Robot, or just The Wild Robot. Um, it was very good. It was fantastic. We both were crying at the end of it, though. Um, it was very emotional at, at the end. Like, it went one way, and then all of a sudden it just kind of like... <clears throat> and just emotions galore. My son was sobbing. I was crying. Um... And he immediately was like, we have to know what happens next. And I told him I'll find him the, se the second book. And I, so I'm going to, and I have it. We can get, I can get it at work um, as like an audiobook on my phone. So I don't even, we were listening to it physically on CDs in the car, but I can actually download it to my phone and then we can listen to it and hopefully then he'll calm down. <laughs> um, but also I'm, so then today I will off to the side here, probably down here. I'll box it off and I will write down the the reading my reading goal for today so that's really all this is going to be used for and then at the beginning and I like there is this check-in box and I will be using this for I also put a sticker here um, I think I will do like finishes 
maybe pages, or like how many days I actually met my goal. Audiobooks? I don't know. We'll see. Or I might just do categories of like books, movies, podcasts. We'll see. We'll just kind of see. I just like to keep track of random things. I really am kind of a nerd stat junkie. I really like to know. I like to calculate those things. Um, I need a blank calendar. I've written things in January already. I shouldn't have done that. Whoops. Um, so for the... I'll just do it for... I'll skip to February. Oh, that's cute. I like the... I just want to take books. I just want to read books and take naps. Um, so I plan on using this, these pages, as um, starting off points, jumping off points. Um, I want to list the books I'm interested in here. Like I want to title, do title and author here. And then this is, I want to put what my WIPGO numbers are. That way it's all together in one place. So I will write, even though this is February, if this were January's, I would write in at least six books a month, audiobooks only. That way it is specified. And then I plan on at the end of it, um, putting in actually my favorite book of the month at the end. And then that way I could look back through. And luckily, I think I'm gonna take all the front pages out of this. Cause this was an 18 month. Yeah, it started in July of 2020, but it goes through December of this year. So I really think I'm gonna pull all of the previous months out and just have start over and just have a fresh a fresh start um but yeah so book and author whip go favorite book and then oops i really like this um i use these to track when i start and finish books so i will be on the sidebar here i will designate i will have my key um i tend to abbreviate instead of writing out titles all the time um, but sometimes I forget, but usually I will do a little acronym or I will do initials. Um, if the thing is really, really long, I will definitely really short it by a little symbol, but I will make sure I note what each of those are. And then I will write, um, what book I started, if I start a book on this day and then what, when I finish it. So yeah, so that's that. That's, that's, that's all I got. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for hanging in there if you've made it this long. And I will be uploading on the 31st. It will be short and sweet, just a couple minutes long after I do the calculations. Um, I, like I said, I am a, I am a geek. I am a stat nerd. I will actually be sitting down and calculating um, things for my reading and my stitching. And I will be sharing how many books I read over the year, um, a rough estimate of how many pages I read over the year, my longest book, my shortest book, my most popular book, my least popular book, my favorites, um, and then also with stitching, how many total stitches I did throughout the year of 2020 and across how many different projects, because I like to know that kind of information. So, thank you guys so much. Hang in there. Enjoy your week, enjoy your stitching, enjoy your reading, enjoy your planning, and just keep going. Be easy with your heart. <laughs>